Hey everybody, it's Christina and welcome back to another video. We're still continuing on with our organization of our craft room. This is my ink video on all about how I'm storing my inks and how I'm storing my reinkers. So let's go ahead and get started. This unit right here are the Stampin' Storage units. These are meant to fit inside of the Calyx from Ikea uh, units. They, they fit perfectly right in there. Um, I did find that when I had these in the Calyx unit, there was a lot of space wasted because you lose all the space that's behind it, but it was a great place to, to kind of tuck my ray anchors. I actually found that these will fit perfectly in my built-in bookcase here in my craft room. So I have three of these right on this shelf. The first one and a half of these is um, Stampin' Up! inks. These caddies I actually purchased for the Stampin' Up! inks. They hold the inks perfectly and they don't push back too far. These are the old ink pads. However, I believe I saw that the new ink pads are a little bit shorter and do uh, slide back further, but I believe they came up with a, a little solution um, for that. This is... Um, this is what this is basically all the ink I'm going to have. I am not going to repurchase and get the small, the new ink pads. These are fine for me. I like these inks. I love the colors selection and um this is pretty much all I'm going to have of those. So they fit in that first one and a half of these. Now like I said, these were built to uh hold the Stampin' Up inks, but I did go ahead with the same idea of what they did to make the um the new stamp pads for Stampin' Up! fit in here without them sliding back was I needed a solution for my Distress Oxide inks. They they do slide pretty far back there and they will, you know, you can't get them out. So plus it, it's kind of hard to grab them. So I did come with their idea of how to fix these units so that your new Stampin' Up! inks would fit in that slide back is I just took some cardboard, wrapped some tape around it so I didn't have to worry about it kind of coming undone inside of the the shelves. And I just kind of did that and then push them, let them go push back. And then it keeps my inks from going back too far. So it was a perfect little solution. It was a great idea. And it gave me a place to keep my Distress Oxide inks. I organize my inks by chaos. I am not a, I like to organize, but I do not care if they're in rainbow um, color order or if their uh, labels are facing the right way. Um, I try my best to make sure I do, and I'm, I'm pretty, I consider myself a pretty lazy, lazy organizer when it comes to sorting um, these kind of things. But I have taken the time to take my Distress Oxide inks and put the name of the ink on all four sides of the Distress Oxide. So no matter which way I put them in there, they're gonna go. And then I also dotted them. The dots I'm using were ones I had in my stash, and they're not really meant for uh, this for this kind of system there they've got a little bit of a gloss on it so it did take for some of these a while to dry and the colors did fade but it's pretty close I probably would have done it a little differently however I went through and did all of these already so I'm not going to worry about it now but it probably what I would have done is just taken some sticker paper and rub the color on there and then just punched it out with with a little tiny punch or something to to do it that way I have um, all of the sets that are currently out for the Distress Oxide inks minus one. I'm missing one and I can't, I, I shouldn't say I can't figure out what color it is, I just haven't taken the time to figure it out. So that is that storage unit that's on my built-in bookcase. And now I wanna show you my other storage unit. So the other storage system I use is by Organize More. I have had this organizer since I, maybe about a couple months after I had my very first craft room and I have beaten this thing up. It has gotten lots of use. It was used for all different types of ink pads. It's been moved in all different types of locations in my old craft room and it really didn't have a place when I moved up here into this new room about what was it, almost two years ago that uh, it would really work because I do have slanted ceilings. However, with my new cabinetry coming, I'm either debating on whether or not to hang it right on this wall that it's um, sitting in front of now, or put it in a drawer if it fits. So it's really, it's, it's being repurposed. I've held on to this thing, and I absolutely love this unit. It's sitting on my floor right now. But this one is one of those uh, 60 ink uh, cubbies. And I have, in this first row, is all of my, my white, my black, and my brown inks. And then over on this side is all my paper tray ink, paper tray ink inks. <laughs> um, 
This is going to also be where I'm going to keep my Hero Arts inks. I One of those things that I kind of purged and regret getting rid of was my Hero Arts inks and my Simon Says Stamp inks. So as I see sales, I'm purchasing and kind of redoing that. So I have um, space for that when I start doing that system. This is, um, like I said, sitting on my floor until I decide whether or not it's going into a drawer or if it's going to be hung on the wall. I do have this one wall right here that I can hang it on and it would fit perfectly, which would be great because it would be right with my other inks. I've also gone ahead and labeled all of these. I didn't do the best job. Some of these were already pre-labeled and things that I have done before because like I said, I'm a lazy crafter and I get new inks and then I don't label them. So I have uh, kind of sorted these out. Some of them, like I said, don't have all four sides covered, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. Like I said, it's just, this is just, I know this is all my black and my white and brown inks. And then for my paper tray ink inks, which is this section right here, I labeled those as well, but I did not have the color codes on them. So now they have color codes so I can see better on um, what colors those are. So again, that was a system that I've been working on. Um, just recently just sat down and did all of the, the Distress Oxide inks and then um, finished up these as well. So the last thing I wanna share with you is how I'm storing all of my other inks and ink um, accessories like reinkers and the blending tools. This top shelf is a pretty small shelf. It's I, I made originally to hold CD cases, but it comes in handy for little things like this. So this first section right here is where I'm keeping my Distress inks. I'm using the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink Caddy, and in these is where I have those along with my little um, felt pads that go inside and used with the, the Distress tools. So I have um, a couple of those. I have three cases for those and they just sit right here on the corner and then this right here is a larger um, tin. This is the uh, mini archival ink storage system and I know when I originally watched uh, a video of Tim Holtz with his new uh, blender tools that he was using them inside of these and I thought oh that's great and then when I was looking around I saw the mini tray for the um, the archival inks, which the archival inks are a little bit bigger than the distress inks, it held perfectly. So I just took one of these tins and they're a little longer and I have a space in there for one more of the, the blender tools. I just keep that set right on the side there. And then I have this little acrylic uh, inexpensive tray that I, I believe I had just around. Um, I have purchased some new ones but these are, these are, this is just one that I had around. In here I have my Distress Err um, blending tools. I don't have a blender tool for every single ink color. As I see them on sale locally, I buy them, and then I also will pick up the little extra sponges. But like I said, this isn't something I keep and have one for every single one. I do have just one individual one that's not labeled, and I use those for working with my my um, regular Distress inks or if I'm using my, my Distress Oxide inks and the colors that I don't have. Um, I do need to purchase a couple more so I have at least one or two more blank ones so I can working with a couple of colors, I don't have to worry about taking them off. So that's that section. Then a little further down, I have um, one of these. This is a, an acrylic organizer that I had on my makeup table that I used to sort out everything and keep all of my you know makeup accessories sorted. It comes in perfect handy for storing the mini cubes. So I have all of my Simon Says Stamps mini cubes in here. They do hold up, uh, I keep some of them standing up so I can see the colors and it gives us something nice to look at. And then I have the rest of them just laying flat inside of the this little hoarder, uh, holder. And then on the very end here is my reinkers. I have my Distress reinkers, my um, Versamark, my white, um, stays on inkers and in the very back back here I have my Stampin' Up! inks. I have uh, this in just one of those another one of those little acrylic holders that I got at Home Goods for I think these were $3.99 or $4.99 so I love these are perfect for for just keeping all of this right on the top shelf of my bookcase here. So the last thing I want to show you is my ink swatches binder. This is a binder that's in the works. I have done my um, my inks and distress inks and my oxide inks 
and I'm working on all the other types of inks, but this is my system. A lot of people use the two the two by two coin holder binder inserts to keep their their ink swatches, but I really don't have, um, I'm, I, I, like I said, I'm a kind of a lazy organizer. I don't really go take the time when I get new stuff to sit down and label them and swatch them out and do that kind of thing. So I'm more, you know, when I get to my craft room, it's more about I want to take the time to craft and not spend all this time organizing. So I'm thrilled to be able to take that opportunity now. But I wanted to come up with a system that worked better for me that maybe maybe I will actually keep up with this system. So this is just um, a binder that I got at Staples. It's my ink swatches binder. I labeled the side of it to say ink swatches with my label maker and then also covered up the little logo that was there that said ink, input ink swatches. And for this, I'm using just regular eight and a half by 11 page protectors. I made myself my own version of ink swatches and I did it so that I can have the color swatches broken down by color. Um, I don't care that they're not in, you know, lighter to darker. I'm fine with the way they are. I just need to know the color and the company. So I added a little section in my book that says color and company, and I've been stamping out all of my inks. Uh, you know, sometimes you have that one ink where you think, is that pink or is it orange? So I'm kind of working on that. You, when you look at the tops of the ink pads, sometimes those colors look ink, but they don't or look a little lighter, but they actually stamp darker. So this is probably one that I would also stamp in the orange section of my book. But like I said, I did go ahead and stamp out all of these into my book. I have uh, my Distress Oxide inks in here as well. I have my regular Distress inks, which for these, I just took the ink pad and just rubbed it on there. I, I was fine with with that. Um, I, do, uh, I did note with little R's if I have a ray inker for those and then I also for stuff like my um, Simon Says Stamp inks I put an M so that I know that it's a mini um, ink cube and not a full size ink cube. My Distress Oxide I went ahead and stamped the image as well as used my um, blenders to put a little blending version of that on there just so I know what it looks like. I probably could have watered those as well. I could have done the same thing with my Distress Oxide or my regular Distress inks. But again, I was just trying to get us some place to have this stuff so that I can leave this and take this to my desk and look at the different color options and not have to kind of keep pulling inks thinking it's going to work. This will definitely be a big help. In the front, I have um, this old stamp set. I didn't go out and buy any kind of stamp sets for doing swatches. I just have this old uh, Stampin' Up! Project Life stamp set that has a hexagon and a circle and they work perfectly for what I need them to do. So don't go out if you don't need to um, and buy something. Just get a solid stamp and stamp these out. I'm gonna put my um, my paper, so if you're like me and you really don't care, you just really want the color swatches and things broken down by color and not so much um, that they're, you know, from lighter to darker and that kind of thing. I'm gonna leave a link to this where you can download it and use this if you want to. It'll be on my blog if you want to check it out. Um, I used for my inks, I used my 80 pound Nina cardstock. Eventually I'm going to be doing my watercolor inks and stuff like that, my alcohol inks, so I'll use the paper that's appropriate for that. In the back of this, I threw in some couple extra copies so when I need to add more because I filled up a whole page, I can do that. These ink um, swatches have 20 ink colors on here, so you get quite a bit just on that one. So that's how I'm keeping track of my ink swatches and how I am storing my, my inks. This binder sits just right here on my shelf with the rest of my cardstock. So I have that just sitting right here on my cardstock shelf right at the underneath my ink caddies. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on my ink storage and the units I'm using to store my inks. Again, I go between the Stampin' Storage because they work great. They worked great with my IKEA unit. And then I have the Organize More, which is the one I've been using for ages and absolutely love and has taken quite a beating from being moved around quite a bit. And it's a great organizer. 
The price is, um, the 60 unit is probably about the same price as this one, which I believe is a 36 unit. And um, if I was going to, if I, if I could, I probably would still go with Organize More at the time that I bought these is because I needed them to go into my IKEA unit, but I do see that Organize More now does have um, versions that will fit into the IKEA, IKEA units and they are a little, they are, you know, less expensive than the ones I got here. So thanks everybody for stopping by. Don't forget to head over to my blog if you want to get a copy of the PDF of the ink swatches that I'm using in my ink swatches binder. Subscribe to my channel if you're new so you can be updated when I post new videos. Don't forget to give today's video a thumbs up and I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.